welcome to this week's Dermatology Flash Briefing. We're going to talk about the role of antibacterial cleanses in acne today. On the topic of the relevance of antibacterial cleanses in the treatment of acne, I want to share that there are two main categories of antibacterial active ingredients present in facial cleansers. The first category would be that of antibacterial ingredients derived from a synthetic source. Triclosan is a chemical with antiseptic antibacterial properties that has been added to a variety of personal care products including hand soaps, cosmetics and even toothpaste for the last decade. The key thing here is that whenever you are using a topical product, in this case Triclosan, you can theoretically absorb small amounts systemically via the skin. In 2017, the FDA came up with a declaration that triclosan is not generally recognized as safe nor effective as an antiseptic product intended for use in healthcare settings. It's also banned over-the-counter consumer antiseptic wash products containing triclosan. Their basis for the ban was that manufacturers weren't able to prove that triclosan is safe for daily use over a long period. This is based on some findings in research, such as, as that it can alter hormonal regulation in animals and can lead to antibiotic resistance. It may even be harmful to the immune system. The key thing is triclosan isn't an essential ingredient, even in toothpaste, when it was previously used as an active ingredient to prevent gingivitis. From a dermatological perspective, the key here is that a healthy skin microbiome would also be maintained in an equivalent way if you are using a gentle soap that forms a lather, which subsequently is physically rinsed off with water. Rather than having to rely on an active ingredient in a cleanser that directly kills bacteria. This is with regards to general cleansing of the skin, though not specifically targeted at the treatment of acne. In terms of the kind of synthetic chemicals that have been shown to be beneficial in the treatment of acne, the importance of cleanses shouldn't be underemphasized. The ingredients such as benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid, triclosan, these have been stated in literature to have the best efficacy profile in individuals suffering from acne. However, these are mostly European studies done in temperate countries. Nevertheless, the key here is that chemical synthetic agents have the ability to inhibit bacterial growth. And as we mentioned, if you are acne prone, there is a concern with the bacterial flora present on your skin. Having an additional active ingredient that can treat this bacterial overgrowth in acne is a bonus. I personally prefer to use an alternative to chemical synthetic ingredients for antibacterial cleansing. In this case, we implement the use of medical grade honey. Medical grade honey has been used in the last decade or so in advanced wound dressings because of its innate ability to modulate immune cells, mitigate inflammation. And the fact remains is that it naturally has these antibacterial, antifungal effects. It also functions as a humectant, meaning that it traps water under your skin, preventing transepidermal water loss. Let me touch on how that is more relevant for patients who suffer from acne. One of the commonest problems experienced uh, with the use of synthetic chemical ingredients would be that of skin irritation, dryness, redness. It's easy for a non-clinician to say that for the treatment of acne, you can use salicylic acid, benzoyl peroxide because it dries up the pimple. In reality, the clinician in the case of acne treatment is a dermatologist. We often notice that individuals develop irritant contact dermatitis, not due to an allergy, but simply because of the astringent nature of these active ingredients. Acne itself is multifactorial in terms of its origin. So it's not as straightforward as it being caused by oil or bacteria alone and hence killing all the bacteria or removing all the oil will, will um, not get rid of the acne on its own. If you remove all of the oil present on your skin, you could still have acne because of the underlying inflammation that predisposes to microcomedone formation under the skin. When it rises to the surface, you developed whiteheads and blackheads, 
which are visible, respectively known as closed and open comedones. More than that, the epidermal barrier can be disrupted. A common complaint is that an individual will have acne-prone skin, but at the same time, dry and dehydrated skin. How is that possible? The truth is, both oily and dry skin is likely caused by the effect of the individual's acne treatment. I also want to share about the value of normalizing a skin microbiome in acne patients. As we touch on briefly in this podcast, um, a gentle cleanser is able to emulsify the dirt, oil, grime and bacteria in your skin. Rinse it off with water and you have a fairly healthy skin microbiome. The key in acne patients, and of course this has to be fully borne out by studies as well, is that acne-prone individuals um, find the bacteria proliferates more on their skin. The nature of genetics, the type of oil they produce, the physical chemical properties of the sebum are important factors. Having a cleanser with a residual effect after you physically rinse it off with water um, is beneficial because if the active ingredient can continue acting on your skin, inhibiting the overgrowth of pathogenic bacteria, then you're certainly making progress in terms of treating and preventing acne flare-ups. The value of using botanically derived anti-inflammatory acne preparations as well is increasingly evident in a post-COVID world where we find that uh, masne, when treated topically with traditional acne creams, becomes problematic because of the occlusive effect of the face mask. For example, irritating ingredients like benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid, these bleach fabric and dries up your skin. In terms of the botanical actives that have been um, promising in the treatment of acne, chlorella vulgaris, uh, derived from an algae extract, has a uh, multimodal effect on the treatment of acne papules. Its mechanism of action is predominantly via sebum control, um, its ability to suppress inflammation as well. Babarin um, is a Uh, traditional Chinese herbal medicine that has been proven recently uh, in a few cell and clinical studies to to have the ability to treat acne via the following mechanisms. Firstly, via hormonal regulation. We know that individuals who suffer from acne may be particularly sensitive to the effects of the circulating male hormone, present also in females, uh, known as testosterone, and its effects on sebum production and subsequently, it triggers off acne. Berberin effectively intercepts this pathway. It also helps with mitigating inflammation besides being a potent antioxidant. Finally, it helps with acne scarring because it can minimize post-inflammation erythema or redness and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, a form of acne scarring. The true conundrum in the role that bacteria has to play in acne pathogenesis is this. If you do not have the genetics for developing acne, even if you have poor hygiene, you're very likely not going to develop acne. This is not to say that you won't develop other types of skin conditions or skin infections, but generally speaking, it will be individuals who are genetically predisposed to acne-type inflammation that find that their acne is aggravated by poor hygiene. There is a substantial role that this bacteria C. acnes, previously known as P. acnes, plays in the development of acne. When you do the typing of the bacteria present um, on an acne sufferer's skin, you'll find that there is a predominant concentration of the C. acnes bacteria on the skin surface. In terms of hygiene in an individual who is suffering from acne, can it make a difference to the acne treatment? The answer is a resounding yes. But will we go to the extent to say that your acne is caused by dirty makeup tools and brushes? Well, it is not scientifically accurate to say that acne is caused by that. But as we said before, if you are already predisposed to acne, then you'll find that 
uh, because of this genetic predisposition, if you use dirty makeup tools, you will very likely get an acne flare-up. The important focus here should be on the healthy balance of bacteria on the individual's skin and how if you are acne prone, there may be a change in your skin flora, which is consistent with what we have spoken of before in terms of the skin microbiome. If you're going to be using dirty makeup tools on existing acne prone skin, where you have the papules, pustules, these will get infected with the surface bacteria and it uh, may not be from these makeup tools, but if there is a high bacterial load on these tools and someone with existing acne bumps uses it on their skin, the comedones, for example, will get infected and that's when you get the angry red papules and nodules. If those are persistently developing into painful cysts, it may require treatment with oral medication. And if the cysts don't resolve, you may have to inject intralesional steroids to bring down the size of the cysts and to reduce inflammation. Well, that's it for this week's flash briefing on my podcast, Dermatologist Talks, Science of Beauty. You can follow me on my Instagram at Dr. Tio Wan Lin and remember to follow us for the latest podcast updates on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and on Google Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts.